Hi, just a quick video to confirm something for a new uh, EEV blog forum user, Mikey6, in the uh, very lengthy, I don't know, God, how many pages is it? It's been going for years, the uh, Rodenschwartz RTB uh, 2000 thread on the EEV blog forum. Anyway, I got my old um, RTB 2004. Mine was one of the first uh, batches, I think, something like that. So I've, I've got pretty much uh, original hardware. Um, so, well, I can take a look at the hardware. For those playing along at home, I've got hardware X03. In fact, I um, tweeted the other day that the Roden Schwartz has by far the best firmware update procedure of any scope. It's so simple, it's so easy. You just stick the firmware file, which you don't have to register for on the website. You just download it, put it on the USB stick. It says before and after, and anyway. Anyway, so Mikey posted about um, how there is a low frequency uh, performance like a pulse response, a low frequency sort of response of the scope on a basic uh, one kilohertz square wave. So I thought I'd try and reproduce it here. And I'll put uh, Mikey's original one here. And uh, this is the response I get. I'm, I'm at a higher volts per division, basically saying that anything over uh, 200 uh, millivolts uh, per division has sort of like a, a slopey sort of like a uh, performance after the initial rise like this and sure enough mine actually seems to confirm that so i'm actually feeding in a uh, four and a half volt uh peak to peak signal 50 ohm terminated bnc i didn't have my inline terminator i don't know where it is but anyway hopefully that is adequate because there's no 50 ohm internal uh um, termination on this but uh yeah you can see that it is kind of slopey let me move that down here so you can get it on the line okay right on the line and i have got 20 megahertz bandwidth limit on so i'll run that in real time for you and i'll show you that response and if we zoom in we can see that is the uh that is the peak response oh sorry about the the um screen is very glary on the rtb i did have a matte screen thing but i haven't put it on so you can see it's nice but it doesn't yeah you see how it's just it's a little bit droopy there where it uh what, 100 microseconds per division, so there's like a good 50 microseconds of droop there before it gets up, but I, it looked worse, it kind of looks worse and a bit more slopey, I guess you could call it, um, at a longer time base like that, but eh, you know, so like there's no overshoot there, but there's definitely some like definite deep, like low frequency undershoot there. It, it is taking time to sort of like ramp up. And here's the exact same signal on the new uh, HDO 4000 Rigol here. And you can see that it is a very nice response. I've got it. I'm just adjusting the vertical fine so that it gets higher volts per division. But there you go. See? Some, there's some droopiness here. This is full bandwidth though, I believe. So let me, you can see the uh, response there. We can turn on the bandwidth limit on here and boom. Then all of that, whoop, hello. All of that overshoot goes away. But then, once again, it takes a little bit of time to get up there. What, uh, and two microseconds, it doesn't take the hundred microseconds, but you know, you could argue that, oh no, there you go. It's a little bit, a little bit peaky there, geez, you know, we're, we're faffing around the edges here, but of course this is going to be, um, all of this stuff we're going to be looking at is to do with the linearity of and response, the pulse response of the front end, because designing an attenuator front end to actually give you a good pulse response at both low and high frequencies uh, with uh, like a voltage divider in there that is like it's pretty you know it's it's not easy so uh, scopes are going to have different sort of like lower frequency and higher frequency pulse responses even though here when we're talking about you know the rising edge here and then that little bit inside there that is the high frequency pulse response of that that's why when we bandwidth limit it um, you know, we don't, you know, we, we cut off all the high frequency uh, ringing uh, response content in there. But anyway, that is the Rigol, so that looks very nice. And the key site here, there you go, it's a bit fuzzier because it's got a, a well, is the bandwidth, yeah, bandwidth limit off, bandwidth limit on. So, horizontal, we can go in there, if we turn the bandwidth limit off, then yeah, you can see, start to see the ringing, of course, that's what you'd expect. And but bandwidth limit off, but this is fuzzier, so we're probably going to have to turn on 
some can we put on high res mode there you go we can put high res mode on there and you can see though the response there once again you know it takes a little bit you know 50 you know 20 microseconds or something to get up there it doesn't it's you know but we're down in the pixels there right we're we're down in the pixels and the new tech 2 series this is interesting check it out it goes up and then there's a slight dip back down so it's got a very different pulse response that's with the 20 megahertz bandwidth limit there we can turn that off of course and then we can get the full 500 meg and it, it's the same like actual sort of like lower frequent by lower frequency i mean like 20 megahertz response but of course if we zoom in then we're going to see our real high frequency content and once again that will bugger off if we turn on our 20 megahertz bandwidth limit but yeah you can see you can see in here once we sort of like expand this out what are we at we're at two microseconds per division now so and then you can see it go down like you can see like we're sort of like individual pixels here right so only talking a couple of samples right but it does actually drop back down and then goes up a few samples and then so there there you go that's a different pulse response again sort of like a lower frequency um pulse response to this one kilohertz signal now let's see if this changes with different volts per division settings so okay interesting i'm now at 500 millivolts per division and we get like an overshoot on there now once again it's kind of like a couple of pixels in the other direction there you go so slight overshoot there once again right this is 50 ohm input terminated right 50 ohm source by the way i'm using my uh rigol dg4162 uh function gen here to generate uh, just a basic one kilohertz square wave so there you go that's interesting we're getting like a couple of pixely overshoot there but the once again if we go back to the roden schwartz let's try a different uh volts per division setting now i'm at 100 millivolts uh per division and check it out we're not there's a little bit of it going on there well let me uh expand that but uh, th that looks pretty good right that looks pretty schmick oh maybe maybe you can see some like wobble in there can you like oh there's a little bit of like why are we talking a couple of pixels here a couple of samples yeah it's just <laughs> it's really hard but you can kind of sort of see that response is a little bit wobbly there so this is the setting that he said it was okay so i'm going to go to 200 millivolts per division and crank it up there you go so yeah it, it's kind of sort of confirmed to what mikey saw that there is sort of a a kind of a non-linear um lower frequency response there oh by the way check this out on the new uh, tech 2 series this this has to be deliberate okay if i actually uh press the auto set uh button where is it uh auto set down here then watch what happens to the volts per division 2.6 2.6 volts per division it actually goes to the fine the auto scale auto set function goes to the fine scaling of your volts per division um i i don't think any other scope i've used has ever done that i presume that's a deliberate feature like but it hasn't even made it like you know what why not make it bigger than that i mean <laughs> it's just it seems a bit silly so let me set it to say here and then auto set it again and see what happens it's gone to three volts per division three <laughs> so it obviously go the algorithm auto set algorithm says okay it must leave at least a division top and bottom somewhere between you know like somewhere between maybe the second division top and bottom it needs to be in there and then it selects a fine um <laughs> volts per division setting that but of course you know like you can just override that of course just by uh going like that again but like i i don't know you're either gonna love that or you hate it let's have a quick look at the siglent sds 2354x plus geez they've got complicated names um this one looks pretty good that's with no bandwidth limit uh how do we go i haven't used this forever 20 meg bandwidth limit 
There you go, that looks pretty schmick. Oh no, hang on, no. Check that out, it's got something at the beginning. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there's a little droopy droop there. And here's the Uni-T Ultra Phosphor UPO 3254E. Jeez, imagine trying to remember all these numbers. Um, anyway, this one's pretty schmick, isn't it? There you go. Just happens to be really good pulse response. But, you know, you change it, you go down to a different volts per division, and you might get something else entirely. No, just some high frequency overshoot there. That's a 20 millivolts per division. That's given a decent show for itself. Back to the Roden Schwartz again at 10 millivolts uh, per division. And yeah, you can, uh, you can see it sort of goes, there's a little dip and then it sort of slightly goes up. We're only talking a couple of samples here, but you know, there you go. So, but this is not really unexpected because as I said, it's quite difficult. We're talking about the pulse response of and the compensation of the attenuation circuit of the front end, the voltage divider and attenuator. And you're going to get, and you could potentially get a different uh, response depending on which volts per division setting you've got, depending on where in the voltage divider ladder it is. If you're right at the top tap, of course, then you're going to get, right, a potentially better response than if you're uh, getting somewhere other tap down uh, the voltage divider. And then you're talking about compensating your resistive voltage divider and the pulse response of compensating the resistive divider there. And then you've got low and high frequency compensation and, you know, all sorts of variables that goes into that. So if you want to test an oscilloscope properly, you would have to actually test the pulse response with a known good input signal. I've only tested one function gen here, right? Known good input signal um, on every single voltage range. And it has to be correctly terminated and everything else. And you'd have to do it with the 50 ohm termination and without the 50 ohm termination potentially. And, and then like <laughs> you can try and test the pulse response of scopes until the cows come home. But the worst one I've ever seen, I think, is the Techway one. Oh, that was donkey's years ago now. I'll try and put in a uh, screen capture of the pulse response of the Techway and it was just all over the shop. Oh, goodness, it was terrible, Muriel. So anyway, it's something uh, worth, uh, you know, inspecting on your own scope. But actually, let me briefly um, try and just uh, get another uh, source here, signal source. Right, here you go. This is slightly different again, is it? This is using the uh, SigGen output on my uh, Keysight 3000 scope, so the WaveGen output there. And you can see that it's kind of like got almost a ringy kind of response there. Hmm. And that's the same signal on the Rigol HDO 4000. Once again, a little bit of overshoot there but yeah like you've got to take into account the signal source and everything else but there you go um a pulse response is certainly something to uh consider on a scope but it's worth investigating it's it is interesting phenomenon and not every scope is perfect and then as i said it can change depending on the volts per division at what range you're actually on on your scope because it can they can have slightly different low and high frequency compensations on each range and it's not like you know there's a little uh, trimmer there like back in the old days <laughs> and they used to have little trimmer pots right um so that you can uh, 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 with your tongue at the right angle tweak the response of each uh, of the resistor divider stats but even then like you might have to have multiple uh, compensations for high and low frequency um, response and uh, it said it, it gets really ugly um, so yeah just because like, you know, we saw that the Unity is uh, spot on there. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's absolutely exceptional. So, yeah, it's not something I worry about too much unless it's absolutely horrific. Um, it's just like an interesting quirk of um, scope front ends and the complexity of trying to implement a voltage divider over uh, a frequency range like this. And ultimately, of course, when you get a square wave with a rise like that, like you'll never see this distortion on, you know, like a, a ramp uh, waveform, uh, for example. It's just it's just moving too slowly. But when you get a square wave with a pulse, a step response like this, which has high frequency uh, components in it, depending on the uh, slew rate, then the response after that um, can, you know, do interesting things. And you see, like if we turn the bandwidth limit off, then you can see, you start to see the overshoot uh, 
um, in, and stuff in there. You start to see the ringing and, uh, you know, like transmission line effects in there, um, termination effects and stuff like that. And that's when, you know, at, at the high frequencies, like having the difference between having your 50 ohm terminator here and having an inline one, like really could make a difference. But in this particular case that we've been looking at, it makes no difference at all because uh, we're looking at sort of the lower uh, frequency response, like the sub 20 megahertz um, type response here. But there you go. Hope you found that interesting. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up and leave your results for your scope down below. Catch you next time.